seen your faithfulness time and time again. You are with us, King through all the ages, from glory to glory. You will keep the promise of your praise. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Find your seats now. You made it right in the nick of time. All right, I'm going to give you a early announcement here, just in case you want to hear it first, in case you need to just tune me out for the next 90 seconds. We're live streaming this tonight. So if you have someone that doesn't live in the state, in the area, that would like to watch this, they could just log on, live.arborroad.com, and uh, they'll be able to take it all in, okay? Live.arborroad.com. Now, you could be texting as I'm saying the next several things. Uh, what a what a fun thing to get together and enjoy something like this. And um, you know, musicals like this are not new around this church. Certainly, uh, not not probably new for a lot of you. I see sitting out here tonight. I was just talking um, with Mrs. Brown, who was telling me that she's been you know teaching Sunday school for 40 years here. And so, a lot of these kids. That's pretty great. Yeah, applause led by people who have all we've all actually been in in her Sunday school class. I think I actually got held back in first grade Sunday school. I don't even know if that's possible, but first grade and fourth grade Sunday school, I think. But now look at me, I'm driving the school bus. So um, uh, I will say though that um, Winnie Chevelle and I were kind of laughing today that these, these round trees up here are the same trees that she and I uh, performed in the shadow of when we did Enchanted Journey way back when the, when the earth was cooling under the direction <laughs> of Ann Rittenhouse, who I see sitting right down here tonight. Ann, always great to have you in the house. We're going to be able to appropriately uh, thank all the people who have put in so much time into this performance tonight, but needless to say, you as parents, you've been showing up, you've been bringing your kids, you've been entrusting them uh, under some great leadership, and they've put together a, a great presentation tonight. And if you grabbed a bulletin, you can see on the very back of it the Isaiah 61 passage that talks about the reality that it is the Lord who does the planting in our lives. It's, it's, his, it's his responsibility that he takes very seriously, and it's his pleasure. And tonight we're going to be able to just hear uh, out of uh, the context of the parable of the sower is just another great presentation that comes by way of illustration of the love that God has for us and his desire to see us grow. This is going to be lightning fast. It's going to, it's going to go by before you know it. And um, so here's my encouragement to you. Turn your phone off. Just turn your buzzer off. Turn everything off. You don't need to look at it for the next 35 minutes. You'll be fine. The earth will continue to spin just fine. If you have to leave tonight for any reason, though, would you do us a favor and just use those back doors? Make all the distractions as little as possible up here because these kids have just given it their absolute uh, all to get us... Uh, ready and prepared to hear this great message you're going to be bringing. So before uh, we bring them out, let's bow our heads. Let's give this to the Lord. It's a worship service that we're engaging tonight. Let's give him praise. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks in advance for the many ways you're going to be honored and blessed uh, through these children and their hearts ringing out, Lord, and their acting and uh, the presentation that they'll bring to us um, in a very, very meaningful and acute way. God, we just give you thanks for arts. And we thank you that you are a creator and uh, that you love this kind of a thing. So we give you thanks in advance for all the things that we will uh, uh, embrace tonight. We look forward to great anticipation. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, presenting Acorns to Oaks. Put your hands together. Let's welcome Voices in Praise.
Rise and shine, a new day's dawning. Rise and shine, it's a brand new morning. The sun is breaking through the sky. So wake up, sleepy head, and open your eyes. Rise and shine, it's time to harvest. Rise and shine, we'll always do our best. This is a day that the Lord has made, so rise, rise and shine. Hurry up, there's work to do. Rise and shine, it's harvest time. Everybody, let's head to the fields. Let's go Wait a minute, youngins. Hold on. Not so fast. We just wanted to get an early start today, Mr. McDonald. You know what they say, a farmhand's work is never done. You've only got one more week to get your harvest in. Oh, I'm afraid you've only got one more day. What? One day? What are you talking about, Mrs. McDonald? Oh, I heard them talking about it on the radio just a little bit ago, and I'm pretty sure they're still talking about it. Could you turn it on, Jeb? This is Twister Test with the weather update. Our latest bulletin shows a cold front moving from the north, meeting the trade winds coming from the south, fed by precipitation from the east and perspiration from the west. And, that, and all that adds up to... One big bad weather day tomorrow. So all the farmers in the Tri-County region are urged to get those crops in by sundown. And now, back to our regular programming. Sorry, gang. Looks like we've got a pretty big job ahead of us. Not to worry, Mr. McD. I got something right over here I've been working on. It'll harvest those crops in no time. Not another crackpot invention. You know, Alfred, the last construction new book was supposed to paint the barn. It ended up painting the cows instead. <laughs> but this one really works. It's all tested and ready to go. Here it is, my latest invention. It slices, dices, packs everything into a bale, and even ties a bow. I call it the XL Mechnum Crop Terminator. Just watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, Alfred. One day your inventions will really help a lot of people. I'm sure of it. Maybe one day, but not today. Mr. McDonald, we're wasting time. We don't need to depend on some machine. I don't need to depend on anybody or anything. I can do whatever needs to be done myself. 
I stopped trying to do things on my own a long time ago, Meg. I don't know any coworker that's more dependable than God. But we've only got one day. How will we ever get this harvest done in one day, even with God's help? Seems to me God has always been able to do a lot in a pretty short timetable. In Genesis, it tells us that in one day, God created day and night. In another, he created the sky and seas. Why, he even created his children in one day. But the job's so huge, and there's so few of us. That's when you really have to depend on God. God can take something pretty small and turn it into something enormous, like when a mustard seed turns into the biggest plant in the garden, or when an acorn turns into a giant oak. Are you all ready to grow like that? Yeah! He's changing this acorn into a mighty oak. He's making me holy. He's teaching me to grow. Learning to trust and obey. I'm getting stronger each day. Good, because he's changing this acorn. Changing acorns to oaks. the kind of faith it takes to bring in a harvest. Where should we go first? Let's go to the North 40. Those are the fields where I supervise the planting. All right, Meg, the North 40 it is. Mr. McDonald, Mr. McDonald, bad news, bad news from the North 40. What bad news is she talking about, Meg? I don't know, sir. Spud's the foreman. Ask her. What's the bad news, Spud? The crops, Mr. McDonald, they've withered and died. We planted them several times, in fact, but they never took root. Mmm, I was afraid of this. Did you find many rocks in the soil, Spud? Yes, yeah, sir. Lots of rocks and weeds, too. And whenever we tried to put down new seeds, these big boats flew down and ate them up. This is exactly what happens when you don't cultivate the soil. Cultivate? What's that? Cultivate means preparing the soil for planting. It means getting rid of anything that might be getting in the way of seeds that are trying to grow. Did you cultivate the soil, May? No, we plowed. Who said anything about cultivating? As a matter of fact, someone had a lot to say. His name was Jesus, and he knew more about sowing and reaping than any farmer who ever lived. He told his friends a story about it once. I think it's something you need to hear. I know a farmer who went out to sow his seeds. He wanted a harvest and some strong oak trees. With a smile on his face, he headed straight to the fields. Soon he would find out what kind of crop he would yield. Soon he would find out what kind of crop he would yield. He sowed the seeds and so they fell upon the road. This made a lovely meal for one hungry crow. A few grew on the rocks but quickly withered away. It's passing longer, it's to last for more than a day. Plenty longer, it's to last for more than a day. Please don't be surprised. Could you help me now to understand? Because I really, really want to know what I need to know to make a harvest grow, a harvest grow. Some of the seeds. 
seeds they tried to grow among the weeds. They were choked and tangled, they could not break free. Finally some of it landed on the riches of soil. The farmer used a harvest that was well worth his toil. The farmer used a harvest that was well worth his toil. now, Meg? Sure. I got the bad seeds, that's all. <laughs> no, no, the seeds are all fine. In fact, they're incredible. You see, the seeds are the word of God, and only the person who listens to the word and applies it to their life will find those seeds falling on good soil, and that's the only crop that will yield a harvest. But what about the rocks and the weeds and the birds? Can that happen to our soil too? I'm pretty certain the soil around here is good, but you always have to be on guard. Rocks can roll, weeds can spread, and tricky birds can pop up just about anywhere. Enough flitting around. Let's chow down, right, Robin? Time to feed on some seed, wouldn't you say, Lark? I'm scratching and snatching, Maggie, but where, where is the seed? seed? Sorry, ladies, but this is good soil. The seeds have already taken root and grown. You'll have to find some poorer soil somewhere else. <laughs> well, let's fly this coop, right, Robin? I should say, what inhospitality, wouldn't you say, Lark? Well, we'll never accept a lunch invitation here again, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Woof, that was close. It's a good thing our crop is already planted. Not just planted, but with deep roots. If you hear God's word but don't respond, the seeds will just lie on the path, and birds will come and eat them up. But when the message is received, the seeds take root and yield fruit that is a hundredfold. I want your love, joy, peace, patience way down in my soul. Kindness, goodness, faithful, gentle, self-control I'll keep growing in you so your spirit can produce The fruit that is rooted in you I want your love, joy, peace, patience, way down in my soul Kindness, goodness, faithful, gentle, self-control I'll keep growing in you so your spirit can produce The fruit Bye. 
half over and we've barely gotten started. We'd better get back to harvest now that the birds are gone. Yano thinks to Alfred, make my day, make my day, make my day. <laughs> you know, Meg, what I appreciate about Alfred is that he keeps on trying. Yeah, and he keeps failing. Stop it, Meg. You're just jealous because your crop didn't grow. I am not. I told you, I got into bad seeds. Nothing was wrong with my soil. Except a bunch of weeds. See, they're all mixed in with the plants. Let me see those weeds, bud. The weeds can't grow here, can they, Mr. McDonald? You can never be too sure, Kelly. Even when the roots go deep, weeds can sprout up at any time. Hey, you guys, have you ever heard the story about when Alfred tried to win Bent an electric rooster? Have you heard the story about Alfred? And once weeds start to grow, it's almost impossible to get rid of them. And then there was another time when Alfred was even crazier. Have you heard the story about Alfred? I'm Blabs. I'm Squeal. And, and we're, we're the weeds, weeds with a real big bad really rotten rumor. Once you repeat it, it's hard to defeat it. Now look at the mess that you've got. The one about Alfred, everyone knows. The story, it's all over town. I assume what we know how a rumor can grow. Just like a big weed in the ground. I'm a rumor weed. She's a rumor weed. I'm a rumor weed. She's a rumor weed. A title story is all she needs. Big, big mess. She's I'm a rumor weed. Like no harvest, no bread, man. Alfred Nito. Bye bye, baby, bye bye. Sign sealed to live with. Ciao! Also, Vista. Hot weeds. <laughs> took a lot of weed killer to silence those two. Weeds are tough, especially when they've been allowed to grow for a long time. Hey, I'm sorry listening to this guy. I didn't really believe the stories they were telling everybody. <laughs> That's okay, Spud. Man, we're never gonna get this harvest done on time. We're chasing birds and killing weeds. Now, another weather's starting to cloud up. 
Is this soil finally good enough? I'm afraid there's still one problem with our soil. I can see some rocks and stones right where I'm standing. Rocks? In this soil? It's as flat as can be. I don't see any rocks. Rocks come in many shapes and sizes, Meg. They can be found in a closed mind and a hardened heart. Nothing can grow that isn't open. You know, this bad weather that's been forcing our early harvest can be looked at two different ways. On the one hand, it's trouble. We didn't expect it, and now we have to finish our harvest more quickly. On the other hand, it's a blessing. We didn't expect it, and now, well, we'll have our harvest more quickly. Don't fight the rain, Mage. Nothing can grow that isn't open. Call it what you will. I call it rain. When troubles come and pat against my soul. Go in if you like. I will remain. The washing water make me whole. Just when I sure felt I can't bear the rain, a tiny leaf starts pushing through the ground in a place where the ground was too. McDonald, but I'm learning that I can't do everything on my own. We're going to have to work together, right? Well, yes, that is right. It's the way we were created, Meg. God knew we would try and fail on our own, but he loved us so much that he gave us a way back to him. That way is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way seeds of truth will stay planted, take root, and grow to bear eternal fruit. 
That's not man's way. That's God's way. How can I make that my way? All you have to do is ask. It was in the garden, God created man. And it was in the garden, man rebelled. And sin was set in motion when we turned away from God. And the Creator who breathes life in us could no longer dwell. to do everything on my own. The Lord will be with you every step of the way, and so will all your brothers and sisters. That's awesome, but even with all of us working together, we're not going to get this harvest done. 
It's just a few minutes to sundown, and we have all those fields in front of us. Uh, I have something that I think will help. Will you go get them for me, Spud? Of course, they may not work, and you may have a better idea, Meg, so you don't have to use them. Use them if you don't want to. Alfred, I'm really sorry for all the times so I've made fun of you and to your inventions. I think I was just jealous because you were so smart. So yeah. I would love to see what you've been working on. Yeah, just give us time to take cover. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I call this the Super Ram Multi Drive Turbo Harvesters. Batteries not included. How do they work? Well, as you look out over those fields, I can tell they're right for harvest. I know a lot of you out there have brought something for those in need. So if you all help me pass the turbo harvesters, we'll collect the biggest harvest we've ever had. And remember, this is just the beginning. Jesus has called all of us to spread the seeds of his love to every person in every land. Now that will be a harvest. The farm hands are ready, Mr. McDonald. They sure are. I declare, I've never seen so many acorns turn into oak so quickly. Give them their orders, Meg. Yes, sir. It's harvest time. Open our eyes, the fields are right. There's so many lives that need to know Christ. It's harvest time, yes, Lord. It's harvest time.
It's too quiet. Let's also just take a second and thank all the parents, all the volunteers up there in the booth, tech, all the people behind the stage, people you haven't seen tonight that made all this come together. Thanks, guys and girls. Thank you. And a very, very special thank you to you, Wendy Chevelle, for the great work you just continue to do with these kids. Mother hen of all of these children, thank you for your great work. You're amazing. Awesome. It's a really important message we were listening to here. And, you know, the, the actual st story was told in Matthew chapter 13. It's the very beginning of a series of parables that Jesus was telling about the kingdom. And he said the seed that's being sown is the word of the kingdom, the message that Jesus and his disciples brought that, that we have heard and that we tell our friends. And the reality is, and especially in a world like what we're living in, and really our world is not much different than the one they were living in, there are so many distractions that keep the seed, the word of the kingdom, from taking its full root in our lives. The evil one who wants to snatch it away, who wants to steal it and kill and destroy every good thing that God wants to put into our lives. Worries in the world that wrap us up, shallowness in our faith. But Jesus is constantly pulling for that seed to fall on fertile soil that has been tilled, that has been prepped, that's ready to receive it and in return, produce a crop. You need to think about your life, though, because you're in charge of the cultivating process. You're in charge of tilling it day by day. How are you spending your life? What's really important to you? And how important is the seed of the kingdom? How important is the gospel to you? Are you allowing it to take full root in your life, or are you letting the worries of the world and the shallowness of faith and even the evil one himself steal that joy away from you? Jesus said in John chapter 12, Unless a seed falls to the earth and dies, it remains only a seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And he was talking about his own life, what he was going to actually bring to all of us for his love for the world. God gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him wouldn't perish but have eternal life. And that kernel of faith that is sown into our lives by believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose triumphant over sin and death is yours for the taking. It's a free gift. It's an, incredible, it's an incredible gift, the most amazing gift in the history of gift giving. And the song that these kids have been singing tonight and the message that they've been bringing is a real one. It's not pretend. It's not fairy tale. It's living and active. It's a gift that's available for all of us. And the kingdom life that God wants for every single person sitting here tonight is something that you actually can enter into, but you have to be real about how you're receiving that seed. In a shallow way, are you mixing it in with other weeds in your life? Are you just kind of letting it stay on the topsoil and so that it's easy to snatch away? Or are you allowing it to take true root in your life? That's something for you to think about tonight. In fact, before we go, I just encourage you to let's bow our heads. Let's just have a moment of silence before we get out of here tonight. Just think about this message and so that it can take root in your life. And maybe tonight as you're sitting here, you are thinking about your faith. You're thinking about the message of the gospel. And you're really thinking of it in terms of something that's just kind of sitting on the topsoil. Or maybe something you're mixing into all the other things you've heard in the world and the worries in your life. Or maybe your faith is just easily shattered by just one or two bad things that might come your way. Tonight, would you just maybe reach out to God and say, would you allow your seed to be planted in my life in a very secure place? God, would you cultivate the message of the gospel in my life? Jesus, we give you thanks tonight for loving us, for caring for us so much that you would instruct us, that you'd bring to us such a simple parable and have it mean so much to each one of us. And God, we give you thanks for this presentation tonight and the reminder of our faith the reminder of the seed of the kingdom, the message of the gospel. May it take root in all of our lives that fruit would abound. And we'll give you thanks for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And one more time, let's put our hands together and properly thank these children.
I'm going to dismiss the kids. They're going to make their way back over to your, uh, to your green room over there, where I'm sure you have all of your M&Ms with no green M&Ms. I'm sure they're very, very picky with the green room that they want over there. Uh, parents, you're going to be able to pick your kids up if you want, or you can just head on home and pick them up next week. Uh, we'll be back here on Sunday morning. No, I'm kidding. Uh, just be sure that you head over there after all is said and done. We're really glad that you're here. Hang out. Spend some time together. God bless you. Thanks for showing up tonight. We'll see you again. Give us a heart 
for the nations. We say yes. We say yes. So that all will know you, Jesus. We say yes. We say yes. So here I am. Here I am. So finished. My life laid down. Surrender. For the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You. Desire and I long to worry. 
We've tasted and we know there's so much more We are thirsty for your spirit We're waiting here, we're desperate for you, Lord Yes, we are here to call upon you, Lord
just like you promised
still caught a provision. You're still caught of hope. And you're still caught of the harvest. You're still caught of overflow. Cause you Nothing makes sense You're still God So I build my life on this That you are who you say you are You are who you say you are You are who you say you are Cause I've seen it and I know that you are who you say you are. You are who you say you are. You are who you say you are. You are Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. Savior. Friend, you're still God. I don't understand. You're still God. When nothing makes sense, you're still God. So I build my life on you. Messiah, rose of Sharon, 
Yeah. 
I know I know the night's gonna break The sun's gonna shine I'll see the day The dead will be raised The dreamers awake So come and rise up Come and rise up We'll see the tears wipe away The greedy will shout The hurting will raise Forever your graces Oh, nothing is wasted I know
My home is 